Welcome to our third episode in our webinar series on small business growth tools, Blue Jeans virtual events. And Yahoo Small Business and Blue Jeans by Verizon have teamed up to demonstrate the power of Blue Jeans events for building awareness, generating leads, and connecting with audiences of all sizes. You know, <laughs> these days, it looks like everyone's starting a new business. The other day, true story, my five-year-old came up to me and said, Daddy, I want to create a website to sell puppy sweaters. We just got a, a new COVID puppy. Uh, he called her Zoe Cupcake. And so I said, well, that's a great idea, but it really does look like anyone and everyone is taking advantage of jump-starting their entrepreneurial opportunity. Today, we'll cover blue jeans, events like I mentioned, and how small businesses can take advantage of the power of Blue Jeans events. I'm Brad Dorsey, and it's a pleasure to be with you all today. I work in marketing at Yahoo Small Business. I've been working with small businesses for over 10 years uh, because I truly believe that small businesses really are the backbone of our economy. I'm proud to say that with me today are Justin Donini and Justin Davis from Blue Jeans. Justin Donini, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So thanks for the introduction, Brad. As Brad said, my name is Justin Danini. I'm located in Boston, Massachusetts. I've been with Blue Jeans for about two and a half years now. I am on the sales side, and it's been a, it's been a pleasure to help organizations transfer their usually in-person events to digital events. And it's been a, a fun and exciting time here at Blue Jeans to, to help those businesses to do so. So with that, I'll kick it over to, to Justin Davis. Yep, I'm Justin Davis. Um, been in the industry about uh, about 15, 20 years. Um, you know, you see everything, so everything from room systems to uh, Microsoft, uh, heavy Microsoft background, and then uh, um, IP telephony. Those, that's kind of where I started. Um, but yeah, been with Blue Jeans now for about three years, and uh, I just lo you know love anything cloud based like this. And uh, um, I think you'll get a good presentation today and get a good idea of what our events platform can do for you. I love it. Thank you, Justin. Um, so let's kick it off with just a few questions. Why should small business owners consider on event technology uh, like Blue Jeans events? Yeah, so in my opinion, small business owners should be looking for an event solution that's a few key things. It needs to be cost effective, it needs to be easy to use for both the person who is moderating the event and the person who is attending the event. Uh, in a virtual world, this has become increasingly important. In my opinion, our event platform is very easy to use as many different interactive features to keep the attendees engaged, which is very important in an event as well. That's great. You know, I love Blue Jeans virtual backgrounds, and I must say, and not just for the benefit of the audience either, um, I think that the virtual environments that Blue Jeans provides are hands down and above beyond what the others in the industry are offering. So I just wanted to make that known. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, another question, how can Blue Jeans events help small business owners grow in their lead generation efforts? That's a big question because many companies, lead gen really is a source of their uh, opportunities with prospective customers. So how can Blue Jeans help in that area? Sure. So first and foremost, when you're hosting a webinar, it's obviously about a different topic. Whatever that may be is usually in respect to whatever industry you're in. So you're going to be seen as an expert in your field and webinars allow you to reach hundreds to thousands of people instantaneously and you can collect the necessary information of anyone who has joined. Typically speaking, if they're joining your webinar, they're interested in what you have to say. So you're building a lot of value around your organization and the product or service that you may be selling. Uh, and when hosting an event, you can also have people sign up and register. So they'll be giving you key information such as name, email, phone number, what company they may be from. And all of this information is available for the moderator of the event to leverage after the fact. And beyond that, we also integrate with many CRMs and marketing softwares most importantly, or, or the most popular, I should say, is probably Salesforce and Marketo. And later on, Justin Davis can speak to those integrations a little bit more in depth. Yeah, Marketo was a great 
uh, email marketing platform. We use that in our company to great effect. It's, it's, yep. it's really wonderful. How can small business owners assess the type of event technology they need? Sure, so I touched on this a little bit earlier within the first question. In my opinion, what should be most important is a webinar tool that obviously given the stage and the times that we're in right now, it's cost effective. It should be able to integrate with your CRM and marketing softwares, and it needs to be easy to use from a moderator and an attendee perspective. A lot of times, if you're leveraging a webinar software that's tough to join, people are just not gonna join. So you want to have as many people join from the registrant list as possible. Obviously, that's that's the ultimate goal. And in my, in my opinion as well, you need to have a few different engagement features that BlueJeans does a really good job of offering to keep people focused within your event. Otherwise, they could just go to, to YouTube and search up this specific topic and watch a video. You want to have people engaged. And uh, this is a favorite question I like to ask everyone when they're talking about their own product. What is your favorite feature of BlueJeans events? Mine is far and away the raise hand feature. So what the raise hand feature does is that there's a little hand icon at the, I believe it's the bottom right of the screen for the attendees. And what that allows them to do is that allows them to engage face to face. So if an attendee or maybe an attendee is even a subject matter expert, if they wanna talk and get up on stage, then they can do so. So what they would be able to do is they would click the raise hand feature and it would send a notification to the moderators and we can either approve or deny that request. And if I approve somebody's request, it's gonna bump them up into the presenter role and give them the ability to turn on their camera and turn on their audio to ask a question or maybe even present, like I said, some subject matter that they might be an expert on. Okay, that's fantastic, I love it. And last, what type of events can be done over Blue Jeans events? Sure, so that's basically anything can be done over Blue Jeans events, which is really nice. I would say the most popular topics that my customers seem to be leveraging are employee all hands meetings. Obviously, it's increasingly important to reach all of your employees within an organization in a in a timely and engaging manner, and that's what Blue Jeans events is really built for. Uh, marketing webinars. So your marketing webinars, you can engage customers and prospects with a modern virtual webinar experience brings together the HD video, Q&A, polling, and the different features that I spoke on that would be important for the attendees. And lastly, training Educast. Right now, most organizations that are doing hiring, they're hiring from a, a, a virtual realm. And if they're hiring a lot of people at once, the events platform is gonna be a great way to onboard some of those folks. Okay, well said, well stated. All right, so now we're gonna kick it over to Justin Davis. I think you have a, uh, a demo uh, prepped up for us, right, Justin? Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm kind of a big show and tell guy. I'm not gonna PowerPoint you guys to death. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's first and foremost. Um, so I like to kind of live demonstrate everything. So what I'm gonna do in a second here, um, I'm gonna just explain some of the roles that we have, um, and I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and share out my desktop so you can see. And, and not only that, but that uh, point Justin brought up about the raise hand, I don't want anybody to do it now, but um, maybe before the end of this, I'll even we'll even promote somebody live uh, just to ask a question. Um, generally speaking, you know, either use the Q and A or you could use the chat, like some people already have to ask questions. But just so you guys see the feature before you leave, I might promote one of you again, somebody that's uh, maybe got a good camera, good mic set up in the background as an attendee. Um, you're going to be the one that I'm going to want to raise their hand up potentially. So we'll get to that. Um, so yeah, so really have three roles when it comes to our events uh, platform, right? Because this is a webinar-based platform or broadcast platform. Um, the first role is moderator. So I came in as moderator, few of us did actually, and I'm gonna show you in a second how you can identify those easily if you're in uh, the event. But yeah, I'm a moderator, I can control the event, I can control video layout, I can control, you know, mute people, unmute people, promote people with that raise hand, things like that. Um, and you'll see in a second here, I could even present. It's not gonna be your typical role for a moderator, but um, but they could present if you if you wanted to. Um, presenter, on the other hand, is what uh, Brad came in as, and um, you know we can obviously have multiple presenters in here as well. Um, presenters are just gonna be able to share content, right? So they're just gonna be sharing out a PowerPoint or some sort of application, um, or they may share their whole desktop like you're gonna see me do. 
um, or they may share uh, a video, and we'll talk about that too, because that's kind of a differentiator for our product is um, how we share videos out. <clears throat> you can have any combination of 150 moderators and presenters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, give you an idea today for this, we have about five people in here. Four of us are moderators, one is a presenter. But again, up to 150, any combination you want there. And then the last role is the attendee role. Uh, and the attendee role is gonna encompass really the bulk of your event, right? So we scale, by the way, up to 50,000. So five, zero thousand, I know that's bigger than a, a lot of you would need to go to, but just saying you could go there if you if you needed to, maybe you work with other people and you know, that might have a, a, a draw a larger audience and that might be good for you to know. Um, we also, uh, on that note too, we scale to 50,000 on our platform, but uh, we also, uh, I, again, I don't wanna get too technical for everybody in the audience, but we have this concept of um, uh, being able to, it's called RTMP, it's a protocol. We can uh, essentially stream this out to the LinkedIn's of the world, the YouTube lives, the Facebook lives, and pretty much any other one you can you can think of um, out there, we can broadcast out to those if they accept what's called an RTMP uh, stream. Um, so and again, I'm not gonna get too deep on that other than to say that. So um, again, if you needed to go bigger or, or and you could potentially broadcast out to those, or maybe you just have the, look, we just wanna broadcast out to YouTube and it's not gonna be that big, but we just wanna be able to do that. And then the last thing I'll talk about there is uh, we also have the ability to embed the event into your web page. Again, not gonna get too technical there, but other than to say it's very easy to do. So if you have somebody in your IT or AV department, I mean, this is something, this is literally 10, 15 minutes worth of work. It's not that hard to do and not, yeah. sorry, Greg, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, Justin, I'm so glad you mentioned that because uh, I've used other platforms and you can you broadcast in parallel to different social media channels and, and I get blank stares. So that yeah. was an excellent call out. Yeah, and we were always built on being a true broadcast platform. And that's, again, one of our differentiators from kind of, because there's obviously a lot in the, just the past year that have popped up and as Me Too products, right? You know, I can do events or we can do a large event for you, but there's limits on what they can do or, or limitations rather. Um, but yeah, so we can uh, put it on your webpage um, and we can even gather some information from the user that's that's going to your webpage too. So things like their name, their email, um, and we even give them, still give them the ability to go into the actual event. So because when they're watching it on a web page or when they're watching on YouTube or Facebook, there's not really much interaction at that point. They're just watching a stream. Now getting back to the event at hand here. So you guys, you know, there's about 43 attendees in here right now. Um, those attendees, you're obviously seeing our stream, right? You, you can see uh, you know, what's going on. I'm gonna share my desktop. You'll be able to see that. You can hear us. There's some engagement points that we're going to talk about throughout the day, chat, uh, uh, questions and answers, and even that ability to raise hand. All, all that stuff's optional. So if you're saying, gosh, you know, that raise hand feature is great, but I don't want that on for all my events, you don't have to have it on for all your events, right? These are all optional things that you can create per event. So I'm going to share out my screen here, because like I said, I promised I, I wouldn't do uh, any PowerPoint here. Things out here so you can see. And... Uh, there we go, it's just our web page. I'm gonna get back to the moderator panel. Here we go. The other thing you probably noticed when you came in as an attendee today, or at least the majority of you probably noticed this, is we're a full WebRTC based platform. And what that means from a non-technical standpoint is bring your favorite browser, right? So mm -hmm. use if you're an attendee, use whatever browser you wanna use to uh, come into the event. Um, you know, if you're gonna be a presenter, we uh, we ask that it's it's Chrome or Edge, but as an attendee, you can have anything you want. Um, and some people may say, well, do you have an application? We do, but it's back-ended by WebRTC, right? So you, it's the same experience. There's an exact feature parity as if you're coming in with Chrome, Safari, or the app if you're an attendee, so it really doesn't. But it'll always default to that. And it's a key point because Again, nothing to download for the people that are attending your event, which is, again, where a lot of people get hung up. Um, kind of just to kind of go through the, the moderator panel here a little bit, and I'll kind of get into the feature sets here. Um, we've obviously um, started the broadcast, right? So when you were in, uh, before we started the broadcast, you know, we were all in here. You can see the, the presenters, moderators over here, the list of people. Uh, we were talking in what we call the virtual green rooms, right? So you guys were waiting, you were seeing that customizable welcome screen, you were hearing customizable music, we can customize that as well. And I'm gonna show you where, um, before we're wrapped up here today on that, 
where that's at. Um, but again, you were seeing that. And then you'll also, there's a customizable post event slide you'll see as well and some music there as well um, when you're done. Now we also have it set to auto record. So we have unlimited recording with the product. So whether your event is 30 minutes, four hours, eight hours, we have unlimited recording with the product. We're not, um, we're not stopping you from recording your event and whatever size it may be. And the best way a lot of people do it is they'll just auto record it, right? So the second the broadcast starts, the second they hit this button up here, it starts the recording. However, you don't have to have it that way. You can, I could stop the recording right now if I wanted to for 15 minutes and start it up again. So you, you can you know, ad hoc do it that way as well. And you'll hear me talk about people that create the events. So whoever in your organization creates these events is gonna get some reporting at the end of the event. Um, as well as a recording link if you did uh, choose the recording. And I was, uh, it was funny, I was talking to a customer one time and they were telling me, um, this is one that had obviously already bought events and they said, gosh, we just like it what, that this comes to you. You don't have to search for the recording afterwards. You don't have to search for you know any of the reporting. It just comes to the event creator, usually 10 or 15 minutes after the event. So on the recording specifically, you'll get a link as a, the event creator, and then you can distribute that link how you see fit. If you wanna keep it more secure, just send it to people in your organization, that's a checkbox, right? And obviously the people in your organization, they're authenticating into your network, so that's the, you know, it's, it's staying secure. Um, if you wanna blast it out to the public, send the link out, that's fine too, you can do it that way or post it on your website. Um, and then people initially by default will stream that recording, so they'll, They'll look at it as, uh, as a stream, but there's an option to allow them to download it. And it is an option, so you don't have to allow them to download it. But those are just stored in the cloud for some people may wonder how long, as long as you're a customer. So again, th that's how long that recording will be there. And you can obviously, some customers say, well, I just wanna download it and delete it from the cloud. You can do that too. Yep. Um, so, and then on that recording note, you probably noticed too, when I started sharing my screen out, everybody got a little slider bar at the bottom of the screen. And maybe some of you have started playing with that, but if you manipulate that slider bar around, it will show how much video and how much content, in this case, my shared desktop, you want to see. So I always tell people, you know, if it's somebody sharing a PowerPoint, and, you know, I kind of, my personal preference is 50-50. But if they're sharing, you know, maybe an Excel doc where there's cells and it's smaller, maybe I want to see the content on the whole screen. But you as a, a presenter or attendee can manipulate that um, as you see fit. And then uh, the reason I bring out, always bring up the slider bar up right now is because it's also in the recording. So that's kind of a differentiate for us too, is that you're watching that recording stream that we were just talking about. So I couldn't make the event. I watch it, you know, three hours from now, three days from now, whatever. Anytime somebody's sharing content, like I'm sharing my desktop right now, you'll see that slider bar, even in the recording. And then the... And we're not, you know, the um, <clears throat> kind of going in the. Okay, we may be experiencing just a momentary difficulty. Hey, Justin Davis, can you hear us? Yep, sorry about that. Just a little, uh, I sorry, I demo a lot and I, I hit the wrong button there, I apologize. So essentially I'm sharing my screen out here again and you can see in this middle spot here is uh, where I would normally be seeing videos, right? So <clears throat> before we started, I saw everybody's video tiles here, but now since I'm sharing my screen, we're trying not to create that kind of infinite loop. I'm sure you guys all have seen uh, in the past. Um, so again, that's just why that big blank area is there. Um, Kind of bottom left here, this is actually where you can choose what video layout uh, I want everybody to see. So I changed it early on to the tiled view because I like everybody to kind of see who's who's on for video, but you can make it active speaker if you want. Um, you can also go over here, if you look on the list on the right-hand side, I'll pick on Justin here, is there's this pin video concept right next to him. So think uh, your C-level or maybe you have a, a guest speaker or just some other VIP and you only want them to be seen. So like you can see here, Brad, myself, and Justin are all unmuted on video. Well, if I pin it to Justin, I'm only gonna see Justin Danini's video 
um, and that's it until I unpin him as the moderator. So again, so something, uh, something that's nice, especially if you're, and you again, want to focus on an individual or maybe some sort of a panel discussion. Um, I mentioned uh, a little bit about content sharing. So again, uh, we can share you know, desktop like I'm doing. You can share uh, a PowerPoint, any sort of other application you want. But one thing that kind of a differentiator for us is how we share our videos out. Because what we get all the time from people is, and Justin Danini and I work together a lot, and we'll get, uh, we use this product, and you know, the video, the audio, the lips and stuff weren't in sync, and you know, so forth. And oftentimes that's because they're using some sort of streaming technology to stream it from their laptop, desktop to you know whatever the event is. Um, so what we do, what we ask you to do is upload the video ahead of time to the cloud. Um, so this is something that you, again, your moderator might do or the event creator. So when you upload them, you can see in here, it kind of got these three videos that appear in a kind of real uniform fashion, one, two, three. Um, and by the way, too, a lot of things that are uh, popular right now is pre-recording presentations. In other words, uh, maybe somebody that, you know, you're, again, back to your CEO or some sort of C-level can't make it. They want to pre-record their presentation. Or maybe they just want to record it and they want to make sure it's perfect so they don't experience any um, little glitches like I had a, a moment ago, they can uh, pre-record that and then you can play that back for 30 minutes, you know, whatever, however long the video is. Um, I want to kind of just demonstrate this real quick. This is just a real quick video. I apologize. It's a it's a real cheesy video too. It's just a Blue Jeans commercial, but it kind of give you an idea of, of uh, what that video quality playback is like. So we're going to play this back in 720 uh, HD video. And what you'll see as an attendee is it might be blurry for the first few seconds, but it's just kind of feeling out what bandwidth you have available to you. And then it'll snap crisp into that 720 HD. And more importantly, the lips uh, and the audio and, and video obviously will all be in sync. Now, one other thing that, to note too, because um, you won't see my, my shared desktop when this happens, is when I click play in this video, something else that we do that I like a lot is you can see here I'm the only one over on the right-hand side here that's audio unmuted it'll actually mute anybody that's unmuted accordingly when that video starts playing. And then when the video stops playing, it'll unmute the same people accordingly. In other words, you know, Justin Danini was, if he's unmuted and he thinks, oh, video's playing, I can clear my throat or I can rustle some papers. It, again, it takes care of all that for you. So it just makes the flow of your event go well. But I'll just play this real quick. It's less than a minute, but it'll give you an idea what it looks like here. Ah, there you are, Sean. Yes, Mr. Hillhurst. Our potential clients should be on in two minutes. You ready? Yes, sir. Good. I like yeses. And you'd better hope our friends in Japan say yes. Or you're fired. Uh, but, Mr. Hillhurst, I, I, have, I, have a, I have a baby on the way. No buts, Shaw. Only yeses. Yes, sir. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, babe. Shaw? Not a very good time right now. My water just broke! I can see your shoulder, Shaw. I have no way to get to the hospital. Where are you? If you don't get here right away, then You've the baby and I have divorced You've got five seconds to show you. yourself or you're fired. Hello? First and foremost, it's a real pleasure speaking to you right here from my office. So again, just a real quick way to show what the video playback looks like. And again, it's just a simple but cheesy commercial uh, to kind of demonstrate that. So, but again, you upload these videos ahead of time, you're gonna get that nice clear uh, playback. And in case some of you are wondering, so 720 HD, of course, is what we're playing those back at, like I mentioned. Um, but if you are that broadcast person or you have maybe an AV department or company that's running your event and they say, look, we have a 1080p, we have a good, we know we have a good solid internet connection, we know we have a great laptop to play it from, can we do that? So going back to the RTMP, there's an RTMP, what we call egress, that's the broadcasting out to uh, to the uh, the various platforms, YouTube, LinkedIn, et cetera, that we talked about. But we're gonna be coming out probably in about a month's time frame. the RTMP ingress, which is gonna allow you to essentially, you're gonna bring something into the event, in this case, a higher quality video at 1080. Um, so we are going to allow that, again, in about a month time frame. I mean, and the other one's still going to exist, so you still upload the videos and do that. Yeah. So um, kind of going down, I'm just going to share my screen out here again. Second. There we go. And go back to the moderator panel. 
So down here at the very bottom, um, we have the, the chat function, right? So there's been a, a steady amount of chat coming in. Um, and uh, if I kind of go up here to the top, um, and I was looking at this, that what, uh, that, uh, and Maggie had mentioned that the raise hand feature is actually turned off for this event, so we probably won't show that like I, like I mentioned before. But we have a couple different types of chat. We have uh, the chat for the whole event, which is turned on right here, right? So again, everybody's seeing this, right? Um, and, and that's the way that chat is. So everybody sees everything, attendees uh, um, see it, a moderator see it, and everybody sees it. It's just one big group forum. That can be turned on or off in case some of you are thinking, I don't want that on for my event for whatever reason. That can be turned off. Um, the other chat, as you're seeing here from, from Brad, is uh, there's a private chat, right? So the private chat can be um, anybody can always reach out to the moderator and vice versa. Um, so that's attendees. You can reach out directly to the moderator. Um, I can reach out to anybody I want. And those are just one-on-one -on -one chats. So that's always on. That's not a, You're not able to turn that off because you want them to have that that communication into you. Um, going to that reporting that I mentioned a little while ago, you'll actually get that uh, a report or a chat log at the end of the event. It, if you had the group chat on, like we have it on here, you'll you'll get that whole log of, of all of that. If you have private chats that have happened, like like it looks like I've had one, you're going to get that as well. So you'll get that in a text document. And then um, kind of going over over to the right hand side here, we talked a little bit about this before, and I, I wanted to get back to it. On we talked about the roles, right? Moderator, presenter, and attendee. Um, so the moderators, I mentioned how it's kind of easy on the eyes to know who's who if you're this is your event. So if you look in here, you can see that there's stars next to um, all, almost all of our names except Brad. Not that we don't love Brad, but he didn't come in as a moderator. So right away I know, okay, the star ones are the moderators and everybody else is a presenter. Going back to that hand raise feature, and I'll explain it a little bit more in a second, is if you did bring somebody in on a, on a hand raise, so you decided, look, I wanna take live questions, um, or something that's more popular now is people to do trivia or, or those types of things, they wanna bring people in live, they have a little hand over their name or over their initials there. So again, me as the moderator, I can pick out who's who very easily by looking just at the list um, real quick and seeing the icons. On that note, um, if I click on, I'll just click on, um, yeah, I'll click on Brad. So you can see here uh, the little three dots that I talked about. I can always chat with Brad, I mentioned that a second ago. Um, I can block him as well. So this is where um, sometimes people really want to tightly control their events and they, they'll say, look, we want to bring people in for live questions, but we want to fully control like what they do every step of the way. Okay, so the first step is you have the hand raise feature turned on, which we don't today. So the user clicks that hand raise feature. I actually up here next to the attendees, I'll get a little red balloon. Um, it'll tick up kind of one, two, three, depending on how many of those I have. I go in, I approve those. Or approve, let's say Justin, if that's the case for him, um, he gets a secondary prompt on his side. Are you sure? Because remember, they're an attendee, and you're bringing them in now as a presenter, so they're going to be able to unmute themselves, right? They're going to be able to unmute their mic um, and so forth. And that's actually getting back to kind of what I was talking about here. Because if I go back to that now, I'm actually with Brad. Sorry, is uh, if you bring them in that way, and again, you want to really tightly control your event you can block them right away when they come in. In other words, not that they're gonna do anything nefarious, but you're taking questions at the top of the hour, you wanna do it in a real uniform fashion. So bring these people in, right? So the moderators bringing them in in the background, blocking them right away, it just takes seconds. I'm kind of slowing it down for the, the purposes of the discussion. So now they're they're blocked. Now very, uh, you know, in a, that uniform fashion, top of the hour, okay, we're gonna take questions for our CEO, who's, who's ever their name is. And the first one here is from Brad. And at the meantime, I'm going in here, I'm unblocking Brad. And now I can either unmute him or he can unmute himself depending on what you decide. And now he's talking, right? He's asking his question. He gets done with his question. And now, uh, you know, he's, he's no longer, there's no longer a need for him to be in here as a presenter. That's what we have this demote to attendee down here for. So I can put him back into that attendee role. And now I don't have to worry anymore about him, um, you know, potentially unmuting or sharing something by accident. So let's a little bit about the promotion, but that's kind of a, a differentiator from us to, again, be able to promote people the way we do it. Um, and it's and it works out really well for um, many events. Um, again, we also have down here at the very bottom right, if I expand this out, um, we have uh, the polls and the Q&A right here. So you can see, and again, I kind of, I minimize that for a second because I wanted you to see. So me as the a moderator, I can see already there's a question in here. So. 
Um, again, I can go in here and answer that question, but I see there, there's one in there because of that. Um, and there's two types of questions that we have or, or the avail availability to do for your event if you're not bringing people live. One is somebody types a question, goes to the whole event, right? It's like the group chat, right? The whole event sees the question. The benefit of that is there's a little like button next to it. So when you click the like button, it actually sources it to the top of the pile for me as the moderator. So that's kind of an, a nice feature to, to have. And again, I look in here as a moderator, I know that there's 10 questions in here, that one's top of mind for everybody. I answer that first. Now I can audibly answer that or I can type the answer back and of course the whole event sees it. The other way to do it is you say, look, this is kind of a more sensitive topic event. We wanna have uh, our, our, our questions curated. So we can have those questions go just to the moderator and then the moderator determines, do I wanna go ahead and answer that question or do I wanna take it offline with that user? So you can make the determination, do you want the whole event to see it or not? And by the way, just along with the Q&A and the polls that I'm gonna talk about in a second, you'll also get reporting for this at the end of the event. Again, come straight to the event creator. So just to uh, talk about the polls for uh, like 30 seconds. So polls, obviously we have them. They're, I always tell people they're table stakes really for events. It seems like everybody has them. You, you can either create it right now on the fly, excuse me, or you can uh, create them ahead of time, which is what most people do. And I'm gonna show you in a second where that's at. Um, but if you create it uh, you know, on the fly like this and you're seeing the benefit of what it looks like on my side, right? You would normally see this, but um, what is you know your favorite color? You know, just something simple. And say red, you know, white and, oh, sorry, white and then, you know, um, I still spelled it wrong. There you go, live demo folks. And then uh, add an option in here, blue. So I go ahead, I create this, you know, create as many options as I want. Now it hasn't started yet. This is what it would look like if I create, if I had created it ahead of time. And now I go ahead and I start the poll. You guys will see it in a little bit. And then now people will start voting on it. And, you know, you're obviously seeing the results uh, from my perspective and your perspective all at the same time. But that's kind of how the poll works. I'm going to end it real quick just because I want to, in the interest of time, uh, keep going here. But essentially, the, where we differentiate here with the polls is the ability to, yeah, we have the, the polls like everybody else does. But when we the one report that I haven't talked about is our all-encompassing attendee report, right? So... Uh, that that says when did Justin Dini get here? When did Brad you know, Dorsey come in? Did, were they five minutes early or were they five minutes late? What browser did they use? Going back into like how that easy join experience that we have. When did they leave the event? And then getting into polls specifically, you'll actually see in there if we had ten polls, did Brad answer all ten polls? Did Justin answer all ten of those, or did he only answer five? And more specifically how they answer the poll, how they voted in those polls. That's all in the attendee report per poll per user. So it's kind of nice if you want to use that information for any sort of marketing purposes later on down the line, but it's just a CSV file so you can export and import uh, things into it um, that you see fit. Um, and then the last thing in that, re that attendee report is our attendee engagement index. So the ability to see how engaged the attendees were for your event, and that's based on Again, what time did they get there? Were they three minutes early or three minutes late? Um, same thing, did they leave early or did they leave uh, 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 right after the event stopped? Um, were they answering all the polls? Like if they were offered 10 polls, did they answer all 10 or just nine? And then the last thing is, you know, how, how were they on the internet browser window the whole time or were they multitasking on other windows? So that all gets scored on a zero to 100 with that algorithm. And then you'll see again how engaged your attendees were. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump out of here because um, this is kind of the you know overall you know moderator portion of the event how they how the moderator panel looks. We've talked a little bit about how presenters look. Obviously, you know how the attendee view looks because you're watching it right now. I'm gonna show you how to set one up. Um, it just takes a, a few minutes, and then we'll leave some time at the end. If if all the questions haven't been answered, we'll go ahead and answer off uh, any other questions you might have. So I'm gonna go right behind this window here. And I just opened up a browser window already. This is our main web page, and I'm just going to move it up to the top here. And then you'll see here on the right hand side, um, it says, you know, my blue jeans. I'm already logged in. If you were to open this page yourself, you probably see login at the top, but I'm already logged in. So I'm going to click on that. And then um, these are just the products that I have access to up at the top. So I'm going to click on uh, the events one right here. And one thing I would suggest is if you do uh, end up purchasing our events, 
is on the left hand side here um, you'll see some good video tutorials best practices highly recommend these because they're real succinct and like you know it's not a 25 minute video right like how do you share how do you do this and they're very short again succinct videos but you can see i have a few things scheduled right so it shows you your upcoming events it'll show you your past events but we want to schedule one right so this is what you would do so you buy the product day one i want to schedule something so go in here and click the schedule and we'll just say test one two three just keep it easy and simple whatever your description is um, you'll see this is just kind of our demo environment so just this, just the sizing that we have in here but the, you can disregard that um, and then here's the time and you know time and date it's going to be how long it's going to be um, you know time zone is it going to be something that's going to be a repeat event so is it going to be multiple occurrences of it and you know again we can pretty much slice in and dice it about any way you want that way continue actually let me go back on that I don't want, I want to make sure it's not a repeat that will screw me up later okay there we go so three different types of main types of events that we have public event which is what today's was right so you uh, you are in here you got the link you you click join you know there and you'll see here there's three unique links that are given per those three roles right so a moderator has their own link uh, presenter has their own link and then attendees have their own link so you'll see that at the end here in a second when I create it but again public event essentially if you have the link you're getting in um, the restricted event on the right hand side and it's all right in the definition up here is everyone must have a blue jeans account to attend the event right so you it, that means this is really just for people in your company primarily so that means they're all going to have a blue jeans account your admin or whoever gets this will create the accounts it's not a, a big deal to create an account um, but that's how we're authenticating them in it and that's why it's a restricted event and then the last one here is the public event with registration and I'm going to check on that because I think some of you might be interested and in see what we offer for registration but to Brad's point we integrate with a plethora of others like uh, you know Salesforce Marketo Splash Blackthorn I mean there's a ton of them there that we integrate with and for the more technical people on the line you'll hear the term API so what can we um, our API is how you can develop into our product what's open what's not um, so oftentimes if there's one we don't integrate with right out of the gate if they also have an API and you can get your teams together and oftentimes accomplish what you want to with that particular registration or CRM or what have you platform um, and then just kind of highlight this real quick just uh, the settings we talked about some of this already but um, you know again if you have any room systems so any polycom life-size Cisco room systems and you want those in the event you know check box that right if you want to allow them in um, we do offer phone dial-in right so we do have PSTN dial-in um, that comes with it um, and in fact everything I've talked about at this point comes with whatever licensing you purchase so there's nothing that's like an add-on charge that I've talked about thus far um, but the phone dial-in again we can get a couple thousand people in for you but I always tell people if at all possible have them come in on this right have them come in on, a, on the mobile app versus dialing in when they dial in on 10 digits yeah we can accommodate them but the, all they're gonna do is listen they can't do anything else whereas if they come in on the mobile app or they come in on their computer uh, they can you can engage them right all the ways that we talked about you can see here too uh, event chat we talked about that right so if you turn that off you're still going to be able to chat with the moderator always and still going to be able to reach out to those people and vice versa it's just not going to be that group forum uh, Q&A we talked about that first of all do you even want typed Q&A on maybe you don't even want it on but if you want it on those two types of, of questions that we talked about either going to the group or going just to the moderator and then the auto recording so we had that flipped on for today's event but again even if you have it flipped off doesn't mean you can't record just means you got to hit the start stop button um, the raising hand and that's what uh, uh, Maggie had mentioned earlier that we have that turned off right now again you don't have to have that on for any of your events or you could just have it on for some if you want or all of them and I saw a, a comment early on about closed caption so yeah we have closed caption real easy to do CC at the bottom left hand corner of the screen um, it's gonna be in English for you know all of your attendees more languages come by the way before the end of the year um, and then we didn't talk about this but attendee search so the ability to uh, see people's names maybe you don't want the 400 people that are coming on your event to know Justin Danini's there Justin Davis is there so flip this off and they're not gonna be able to see those names um, similarly down here maybe you don't want them to know 500 people are there right so you can turn those kind of things down playing the welcome music we'll, we'll discuss that customized music in just a second 
And then the post-event survey, again, going back to the agnostic approach that we do with these events, um, people used to ask me all the time, do you have a survey? And I would always say, no, we don't. But, we, you know, when this option came along, again, bring your favorite survey is the moral of the story, right? If you like Google, if you like SurveyMonkey, put that in here, that URL. We're going to serve that up to your individuals at the end of the event. And if they click on it, you'll get your results. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and schedule this. And we'll talk about real quick about the registration and branding. And then, we'll, like I said, we'll leave some time here for questions if, if uh, hopefully some people can stay over the quarter after Mark. So here's those uh, three uh, join links we talked about. You don't have to include all of this in your invite. You can just you can trim it down, right, and you know, copy it out, put in your Outlook, what have you, moderator, attendee. So the attendee one looks a little different because uh, we created this as a registered event. So if I click on this right now, it's going to bring us to a very stock registration page. We're going to talk in a moment about the branding and customization, but the very two questions that are always in any registration is name and email. But you, we're going to show you where you can customize that right now. So if I click on the manage registrations here, you'll see in here kind of a large dashboard. You can see, you know, who's been approved on the left-hand side here, who's declined, who's pending, if there is. If your boss or somebody in marketing says, you know what, I, I, where are we at for that event in, in a couple weeks? I want to know how many people are registered. Go up to the top right here, download report. It's a CSV file. It'll tell you like where you're at at that moment. And then this on the actual customization of that uh, registration. So you can see here, we're using our registration, but here's the, where you can integrate with the others. Um, and then uh, even ones that we don't have uh, integrated already, there's still the ability to work with those as well. Um, but customize registration form, click on that right here. And now we're back to those two stock questions, right? The name and the email. But you can add questions in here and you can choose whatever type of question you want. So again, if you like drop downs or check boxes or what have you, again, add up to 20 in here. You can make them mandatory or not, meaning if they're mandatory, I have to fill in this question or answer it, or I will not get my unique join link. And that is a unique join link after they register. So good for one person to join so they can't forward it off to 20 people, FYI. And then the last thing in here is you can copy in a legal disclaimer. Um, so again, if you if you have that, you can do that. And then when you save this, I'm not I didn't put anything in. You can see over on the right hand side here, preview form, and now it, it'll preview whatever you've done. So if there was questions or that legal disclaimer that you added, you'll be able to see that as well. And then how do you want to approve these people? Do you want to auto approve everybody? Or maybe there's 10 or 20 companies that you know are going to register for this event. I want to approve them, but I want to manually approve everybody else. You can do that. Um, or you can just manually approve everybody. And then uh, the kind of ending on the registration here, you can see I can send out a, a notification a day ahead of time, 30 minutes ahead of time, or both, or none. And then uh, just in the interest of time here, I just want to quickly brush over the branding and customization. So now I've created the event. Um, I'm going to click on the little three dots here. Actually, I'm going to open it real for a moment there. Here's where you create those polls ahead of time, by the way. So this is where you can do that stuff. But I'm going to create... I uh, want to do the branding and customization. Um, it's all self-service, which is awesome, right? So you come in here, call, add the color white logo, kind of per these specs, drop it in here. Very similar to the other page. Now it's going to, if you save it, it'll show you exactly where it'll appear for the moderator panel down here, for the registration page we were just on, and for the event footer uh, for both the presenter and attendee. And then... Uh, some of you might wonder, can you change the color of the background? Yes. And you can even brand and, and uh, put sponsorship in there. People do that all the time. So, again, per these specs, and these are all the spots that will appear in here. You kind of kind of go through these pages and the join page, the loading page, you know, everything. That's where this is all going to appear. Um, but different color, different, you know, sponsorship, branding, whatever you want to put in there. And then the last thing is the music and the banners. So this is where you heard, uh, heard our music when you were first joining, right, and waiting for the event to start, but you can upload your own. Um, and then some, I keep talking about the customized pre- and post-event banner. So you can go in here per these specs again and create whatever you want here. So some people put in an agenda. Some people just put in, you know, whatever they want in there. Um, but, again, that will display uh, pre- and post-event um, per each of these. All right, so that was a lot of stuff. I know I'm right at the, the market quarter after. Um, and I'm happy to take questions for a little bit. Um, you know, just just uh, feel free. I know we got uh, some people left here, so yeah, let me know uh, what 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 came up there, Brad. What do you what do you have? 
That was wonderful. Thank you so much. And I thought I understood blue jeans, but I didn't. Ha I I hadn't broached the tip of the iceberg. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Someone was wondering if uh, if there was a tool for brainstorming, uh, anything like that. I, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but maybe a place in which uh, information can be shared. Maybe you touched on something like that, Justin, uh, in your presentation. But does anything come to mind? I mean, just the. I mean, if you're brainstorming the chat, obviously, if you're trying to, because again, you kind of have that that in, uh, invisible wall between you and your attendees. So the only way you can really communicate with them at, by, well, even and it's optional at that by default is chat. If you wanted to brainstorm, um, I'm assuming that's who you're talking about brainstorming with. Um, but yeah, that would probably be the first and foremost that I would think of. There's not really like a shared document or anything like that that they can, you guys can both edit or uh, I don't know what what that person was getting at, but. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the questions had already been answered um, in the presentation. Someone had a question about Dolby. Someone had a question about WebRTC uh, and those opportunities. So you all hit it out the ballpark. I mean, I, I, I love it. And I love the fact that, you know, not just a raised hand where you can share presentation ownership. Uh, there's so many other things that you can add into it. I actually love the other day. I was using uh, uh, blue jeans and the polls. I was able to share out the polls during the event to other people. It was a link, and they could they don't have to participate, but they could see the polls and how that was going just in a link, and that was amazing to me. Yeah, just real quick on that, what he's talking about there, because I, I I mean, there's just so many features. It's hard to put well. it into you know 30 minutes um, or so. But what he's talking about is if I open up that that tab here at the bottom again. When I go to polls, um, you saw right down here, share attendee engagement link. So this isn't as relevant right now because a lot of people are still home office, but um, what you can do is you can distribute that link out to people. So imagine, you know, we go back and we're, uh, you have some people that are 10, 20 people that are sitting in a conference room or maybe a hundred people in an auditorium, but there's still people online and you know, logged in. Well, the people in the auditorium, they're likely watching it on some sort of a big screen or if they're in a conference room, they're watching it on some sort of panel at the front of the room, but they don't necessarily have their laptops open or maybe they don't even have them there, but they might have one of these in their hand or they might have a tablet with them. So you distribute this link ahead of time and then when questions time comes or polls time comes, you can still engage them, hence the name of it, you know, share attendee engagement link. You're still engaging that person that's in the audience even though they're not logged into the event. Yeah, that is, that is great. Um, you, you know, I was kind of uh, disappointed that you had already taken out the, the poll and closed the poll. I wanted to share my favorite color. <laughs> but I um, started again. <laughs> there's another question we have by John Anthony. He says, I'm a furniture maker and I want to do some small group presentations and demos. Also use this with clients. Would this work as well as Zoom? What are similarities and differences? Yeah, I mean, the, it depends on, you know, so I, I saw some of the questions that were in the chat um, a little bit here and there, and I know there was some Zoom questions in there. And, you know, this is our events product, right? It's meant for webinars and kind of those one-to-many conversations. Um, there are things that, you know, we obviously have our Blue Jeans meetings platform, which does a whole lot more when we talk about collaboration, because the, th the, ask, the uh, expectation there is you want to collaborate with all 50 people on the call. That's not what this is. I mean, there's engagement touch points that we mentioned. But as far as comparisons to Zoom, I mean, probably the big one is our WebRTC and our ubiquitous join experience. So uh, you might say, well, I know Zoom has a web experience. Yeah, they do, and so, do, so does everybody else out there. But the ease of getting into it, the feature parity between that and whatever their application is, the video quality, um, we're, we're offering and giving you in this platform that 720 HD video if you, if you obviously have the bandwidth for it. And that's just going to be by default with all of those things. So, And then the last thing that somebody had asked, and I think Danini or, or somebody had brought up, is the, our Dolby sound that's built into the product. So we don't, I, it's funny, I, I don't talk about that as much anymore, but there's uh, there's background noise suppression just built into the product uh, by default uh, from Dolby. And what that'll do is if you have any constant background noise, like you're at an airport or you have some constant you know, fan noise or something in the background, it squelches all that out and just maps to your voice. 
And that's something that, that nobody has out there. In fact, you might have saw there was a disabled noise cancellation that popped up in one of the menus. Um, we often get uh, uh, performers like, uh, you know, uh, musicians and artists that want to perform. And so for them, obviously, we don't want to suppress noise, right? And that's why we have that option there so that they can have a good uh, musical presentation to whomever they're presenting to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John, let's see. Um, Charles Banks has a really good question. He said, can you preview your camera shot? For example, Brad's shot has a little too much headroom. I couldn't agree with you more, Charles. And that's something on my end that I'll have to uh, to work out. But are there any camera features uh, in the Blue Jeans event broad product that you can talk about, Justin? Yeah, I mean, just the, I mean, it, for individuals like that, um, uh, one question I get asked, and uh, not to get away from too much on the, the question, one question we get asked is, do you have virtual backgrounds, right? We have those in our meetings product, but um, they are coming to our, our events product, but it's only obviously good for the presenters, right? So there's, a, you know, only a hand, it's, it's a small use case, right? You know, because usually your presenters are going to, or your attendees are going to far outweigh your presenters. Um, but as far as, there's no other kind of you know, like uh, snap on things you can do. I mean, you might be able to do it with another program, right, to, to get a virtual background in. Um, but as far as, you know, like me, I'm, I'm at a standing desk. Some of you probably realize that already. I got a lot of stuff going on in the background with logoing and branding and so forth. But yeah, it's kind of all where you place yourself, you know, as a, as a presenter, you know, how close you are to the camera or, or vice versa. And I would yeah. say if they're for previewing a camera shot, as Justin Davis was referring to earlier, we were in something called a virtual green room. And that's before you start the broadcast from a moderator and presenter perspective. And from there, you can take a look at how how you're presenting yourself and adjust it accordingly. But yeah, to Justin Davis's point, there's limited features with the, uh, the, the, the camera itself, but you could always uh, adjust it prior to the event broadcasting live. No, yeah. I will say, Go ahead. I was gonna say, I will say this, um, I'll share this out one more time here, uh, just so you can see this. I had this, where is it? Uh, sorry, there it is. Um, so on the camera front, in case we have any more kind of AV folks on the line, so we've been doing this a long time, right, with our events platform. So. Um, the moral of the story is here, again, if you're not too technical or not too AV-centric, is in the middle of the screen here, we have a laptop, a MacBook, PC, it doesn't matter. If you can get that camera, whatever it is, so we oftentimes get people that are, again, yeah, they've hired a professional broadcast company. They have professional cameras that are multiple cameras of that, and they want to get them into the event. The way they do that, some of these switching devices, again, which you don't need to know the names of them, but the moral of the story is if you can get it into a laptop down to a USB or that barrel connector, we can get it into your event, right? We do this all the time. So, and you can have, you know, like uh, sometimes I know uh, we work with some NBA teams, for instance, and they want to have three cameras and you just have a switching device and they switch back and forth between the one they want, but yet it feeds into the laptop, which gets it into the event. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And I love the commercial with Hassan. That was that was hilarious. By the way, to that point, I uh, I usually do orient my camera because there's so many different cameras out there. But uh, it looks like I'll need to orient it a little bit better prior to uh, these webinars. But that was an excellent point, and uh, I love that. That got my my junior AV going right there, seeing all that technology. I just wanted to grab it. Great, I want to get that and that and that and that. Yep. That's really wonderful. Are the there any? Thing, yeah. Well, I was going to say the biggest thing these days is, uh, you know, we will get asked by people. I mean, yeah, camera angles and, and what you have going on in the background is great, but um, just basic things for your presenters. Two people say, what's the best uh, kind of uh, um, best way to present or, you know, so that I don't have any glitches or problems? Reboot your laptop, right? You know, you have a home router, that's a computer. Reboot that. If you haven't reboot that in a year, reboot it because you don't want it, you know, cronking out in you during the presentation. Um, don't have 20 tabs of Chrome open and 20 Excel docs and you're running a MacBook Air or a Surface Book, you know, like things like yeah. that. Just make sure you do some housekeeping on that front and you'll have a good presentation. And if you are worried, that's when you go into those, you know, a lot of people have been doing those pre-recorded presentations as of late. Um, so that they you know don't have to worry about any glitches. But uh, somebody had mentioned early on in the conversation, we're all over the country. Justin's in Boston. I think Maggie's on the West Coast. I'm in Minneapolis. I'm in the Midwest. I often do. Yeah. 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 I often do e events demos where we're talking to people in London or or you know India or China. I mean, just everywhere you can think of, and it's just like they're right here. Yeah. Yeah. 
Excellent points, excellent points. Any other questions? I know we're nearing time, but any other questions? Yeah, I feel we, we, can, we, got some, we got a few minutes, so. Yeah. And by the way, we do have a couple of offers we'll be sharing uh, near the end with you from Blue Jeans and from Yahoo Small Business. So just as our way of thanking you for attending uh, this webinar. Uh, there, was, there was one in here, um, uh, uh, Lily had asked, do we have a whiteboard? There's not a whiteboard in the product right now. Um, that's something that uh, you'll probably see uh, before the end of the year though. Um, maybe even just second half, you call it, maybe not the end. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I and, also like, go ahead, Justin. Sorry about that. Well, there was one other question too. I saw Peter uh, Beckett asked. He asked, is there support for breakout rooms like Zoom? Um, so, uh, what we're doing with breakout rooms, uh, and this is coming down the pipe here soon. So, again, we have breakout rooms in our meetings product. Again, people that want breakout rooms want a lot of collaboration, right? Because you're trying to collaborate, you know, get these people off into small groups and so forth. Um, what we have coming on that front is think of when you talk about events, right? There's not a lot of initially a lot of touch points, and it, so it depends on those breakout rooms. How much do you want to collaborate with those people that are in your event? So let me give you one example. So we all have been maybe some of you have been to conferences in various cities, your own city, Orlando, Las Vegas, wherever. You go to that conference. There's a keynote, right? That's what this is going to, you know. And let's just call that this event is a keynote. So I've presented, right? We've had some questions, and it's the keynote. But now we want to break off into sessions. Now I don't even call them break off sessions, sessions. So, you know, we're going to have the ability where you can pick the sessions, right? So if there's 10 sessions, you pick which one, you're going to go in that room, sit down like you would at, you know, Orlando or Las Vegas or somewhere else, and you're going to listen to another speaker on a very specific topic. You might ask a question, but we're not going to have that huge collaboration. So what we're going to call it really is like a child event. So this is the main event, and it'll be child events that will be full-featured events in their own right, but being able to go out and, and do that. Um, then we're also in the in in the term of uh, probably the second half of the year as well, being able to do full breakout rooms, the kind that people think of. We want collaboration. To Lily's point, we want whiteboarding. We want uh, you know whatever you know. You just want that full two-way collaboration. So it just, again, it's just going to depend on what you want. But we're going to be offering both in the short term. And uh, Justin, beyond the focus of this webinar, something you mentioned, and it's included in the Blue Jeans suite of products, was the Blue Jeans Meet. And uh, the Blue Jeans Meet has a, a different functionality. It, 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 I think you were talking about at that point when people were talking about just a meeting space, which is different from the one to many. It's a much more collaborative product. Uh, and they can probably find that out at your website too, right? That's right. And then the last thing we'll mention there that, because um, I had said at one point, everything I showed you up to this point and literally up to this point is, is all included in whatever the, the licensing cost is that you discuss with your, your rep. Um, there's one uh, add-on price that we do have, and that's for our what we call our, our events assist team. So if mm -hmm. you're thinking to myself, okay, this is great, but I'm no events person. I need somebody that can kind of manage at least the technical lift for me. Um, I can, you know, obviously manage my own content, but we want to be you be there for you, do be there for you with your dry runs during your event, and then po do a post event analysis as well. So we have a team dedicated to this 24 by 7. That's all they do for events all over the world. And the nice thing is, when we talk about dry runs and even back to camera angles and stuff. Again, you'll you'll cover that off with your presenters and the dry runs. And you'll be able to get and leverage this team for what are the best practices? What did you see when you did the event for thousands or hundreds the last time? What did they do here? You know, those types of things. Um, but it's a, it's a nominal charge. It's not a lot. I and mean, you can get it either on a per event or a subscription basis as well. So you can use it many times in a month. That's a great call out because what keeps a lot of people from events is than unknown you know i don't know i i'm not that subject matter expert i'm not the person who's going to get in front of a i just don't know what i don't know so by getting that add-on service that you just talked about that's going to take away some of that um that uh, that trepidation that fear of getting in there and actually doing the actual event on a on a platform like uh, blue jeans events so i think that's wonderful even just parsing the information afterward Great, great call out. Yeah. Okay, we're at the bottom of the hour, and 
I don't think we've got any more questions coming in. Everyone who attended, I want to thank you so much. Thank Justin you. Squared, I want to thank the two of you so much. Do either of you have anything else you'd like to offer before we end the uh, webinar? I don't think so. Nope. Thank you for having us today. It was a great time. Yeah, yeah. thanks so much. Definitely. And, and everyone who attended the webinar, please be on the lookout in your email for a couple of the offers for our attendees. Uh, take advantage of them. And we will reach out to you next time. Be on the lookout for another opportunity to register for one of these stellar webinars. And until then, we'll see you some other time in the future. Take Thanks care. Thanks for your time, folks.